Truth or Dare Jenga is the best way to play Jenga because it has things like, you know, go tell the bartender they're hot or True. go, you know, dance with the skeleton. Can you I have play a red thing. Yeah, that's the red thing for you. Fun things. Fun things happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like yeah, that's good. Unfortun unfortunately, we can't play it here, but right now, but. We can do a truth Jenga with uh, chat appropriate, stream appropriate truths. Let's Why don't see, we do that? Let's Why don't do we do that? that? I keep looking at my webcam. Let's do truth Jenga, guys. Truth Jenga. So, with appropriate things. We cannot ask about like so super personal you questions. You ask us questions and we answer yes. while we're playing Jenga. Yeah. Um, we're make them appropriate. Jenga. Nothing too bad. Please, nothing too like sexual or personal or anything like that. Because we we'd like to make this appropriate for life. Okay, somebody didn't put it all back, but that's okay because we're gonna build it just like we're building our friendships with at waypoint, people, with at waypoint, and also with the people in chat. Here, I'll make. We're some. about to get personal, guys. Personal, but not too personal. Let's. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Go ahead, you do that. This is what we call teamwork here at Vice. Teamworkatvice.com. Teamwork.vice.com. Waypoint.vice.com is where you should be. And you know, since we're playing a new game, well, I'll uh, I'll do another quickie intro. We are playing 72 games in 72 hours. This is the morning board game segment, uh, and I'm here with Danica. I'm Danielle, managing editor of Waypoint. Danica is the social editor of Waypoint, uh, and we just played you know some chess, some Scrabble. Playing some Jenga. This is going to be Truth Jenga, where folks in chat can ask us questions. We have to answer with a true statement, you know, about our lives. We ask that you not get too personal, because that would be awkward. And I don't like lying on camera. I don't like lying on camera either. Anyway, you can always go to waypoint.vice.com, and you should do that because that's where we have all of our fantastic coverage. And I'm going to call it fantastic because I feel good about it. I feel good about it. People yeah. feel good about it. It's good. It's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm very proud to be here. This is my first week <laughs> at this the website. My, this is my third month. It's your third month, my first week. I've been here for a while waiting for this, for this site to launch. Yeah, and you've been instrumental in launching this site. You have been you. absolutely key to the success Thank you. of Waypoint. Thank so you. Thank you. Let's, I've only uh, been here a week. <laughs> okay, so let's Let's get... Um, so with every successful pull of the jang, as they say, uh, we answer a question. A not too personal question. So here's the issue with that. A question. There's no issue, but people start asking your questions now because we have a delay. Oh, right. So you can just so pull from the just box. Just go ahead and ask yeah. questions and we're going to go. You can pull from the box of questions. You uh, want Scrabble, so you go first. Okay. All right. Well, I'll go with the, the classic move. Here. All right, so you got a question for me? All right, let's see if we got a question. I'll dance for my question. Doing, doing the question dance. <sighs> okay. What is the worst game you've ever played? Probably the game I played last night. Harvester. <laughs> Harvester. Harvester. All right. Harvester actually, I think, might be. Just for, like, it wasn't good in any sense of the word. Like, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like a good adventure game with good puzzles. And it was like one of those things that it was trying to be offensive. So it was like even more offensive because it was like, what yeah. an edgelord, yeah. you know? So yeah, we're going to go with Harvester. Um, I have a really good question for you next that I'm going to hold on to. Yeah, um, sure. From the chat. Sure. Well, there's no Jenga in uh, Twitch, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter, put in Jenga World Tour. Yeah. All right. We're doing um, a world tour right here. World tour of our minds. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go he here. 
Does it need to be like three down? I thought there was a three down rule. Was, is there? You know what? I don't care. Well, you know what? No, no. I feel better about that. I feel better. Feel a little bit Just because it's more of a stability thing than a like a rule that makes things challenging. There we go. All right. Good. Good. Let's see what, what questions I have. Feeling good about this. There's a lot of questions in here. Um, good. And of course, if you have a question or I have a question, we're allowed to. All right, someone asked me about my glasses. How many pairs of glasses do I have and where do I get them? And yeah. I think this is important for me to answer because I always get asked this question. I have, I had like eight pairs and then I got my prescription changed because my eyes are just getting worse with my age. Um, <laughs> I but I buy all my glasses on palette.jp. I'm going to type them in the chat. Nice. So palette, not jp, duh, palette.com. It's a French site. Palette.com. Um, and it's like 40, 50 bucks for a pair of glasses with lenses, like prescription lenses and everything. And then the other site I use is zenioptical.com. Ooh. Same story. Cheap, cheap, and good. Cheap and These good. These are kind of scratched. I need to get new ones. But, oh, you know. Um, is your stream glasses. Right now I have two. I have a pink pair and a black pair. So, very nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. All right, cool. This one wants to come out. Got Let's, uh, yeah, I'm ready for a question. So, um, can you tell us a bit about your workout regimen? Absolutely. So I work out every single day. I have not missed a day since March 1997. It's been, it's going to be 20 years in March, actually, which is bananas. I was 13 years old. I decided I just needed to. Uh, and I do a lot of cardio. I do a mix. You know, I, I spent a lot of time boxing. Now I'm going to focus on Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for my, like, combat sport. I run usually every other day. Uh, typically, my normal routine is, like, four to six miles. Sometimes I do sprinting, so I'll do, like, three miles with, you know, a mile sprint, maybe a couple more laps sprinting. And uh, I lift quite a bit. I do a lot of shadow boxing and like weighted shadow boxing for like my, you know, upper body stuff. Uh, abs. I did abs this morning. So you know, lots of stuff. Uh, the key, I think, is to mix it up. Yeah. To keep and things she's interesting. been she's been working out here in the office. Yes. <laughs> so in a conference room yep. outside on the porch where people can see her doesn't matter. Yeah. I look like an idiot, and it's fine with me because at yeah. least I feel good. Yeah. You know, I feel good, and I'm promoting healthy lifestyle. It's very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right, All right. So let me just make make sure we have good yeah. questions. Um, and feel free to repeat them. You know, because obviously chat's moving pretty yeah, fast. Yeah, we're not so watching the chat one, the whole time. You know, you go. Feel free to repeat. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one. Oh, good. Good work. We're doing good. And then. A good question. Doing the question dance. This is my question dance. Okay. Um, another good question for you. Um, someone asked, what is one game that you started and haven't finished and have been meaning to finish. Mm, good one. Um, I played through like 75% of the Zelda Link Between Worlds, the one where you like oh, go into the wall and... That's a good game. Yeah, yeah. Um, on 3DS and it's good, it's good, but it's not my favorite, but I've been still, I still need to finish it. It's just like in there. And then I also need to finish, I started playing, um, for the DS, uh, Mario and Luigi Bowser's cat, like Bowser's side story, Bowser's backstory. Yeah. Um, it's just like a game about Bowser, and it's really, really good. And you switch between playing as Bowser and playing as Mario and Luigi. And I haven't finished that, and I need to finish it. Oh, I've heard that one was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, you know, 2D Zeldas, believe it or not, I actually, I've never finished one. Really? Yeah. And I love the Zelda series, like the 3D Zelda. I started with Ocarina of Time. That was my okay. first Zelda. Which is, so. it always surprises me that people like don't like Ocarina of Time as much as. Majora's Mask? Well, Majora's Mask, okay, my, my favorite, my, my Zelda games in order are Wind Waker, 
Majora's Mask. Good choices. Um, Link to the Past, um, and Link's Awakening, mm -hmm. and then probably Ocarina of Time. Like, sure. I just, that's that's it. I, I think Ocarina of Time is good. Like, it's, I think it's a really good game. It came out on GameCube originally? Oh, uh, it was N64. Oh, N64, yeah. duh. Yeah. 98. But then it was yeah. remade for GameCube, right? Uh, it came out as a bonus disc for Wind Waker. If you pre-ordered Wind Waker, okay, so that's when yeah. I played it for the first time. Was I, I got Wind Waker? So you had played the sort of like the games where they had figured some more stuff out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Um, but it was my first Zelda, so I was just like, this is a cool adventure game. Like I didn't really play the 2D ones before that. Um, so yeah, I totally well, understand. I don't think it's as good. Majora's Mask and Wind Waker for me vie. Like they're in a war. They're in a constant war for my very favorite I, Zelda. I, I mean, I feel the same, and I feel like that's you know? the case for a lot of people. Like, it is, Wind it Waker is. Wind and Majora's Mask are like, just so, They're both so, so, so special, so and you know, one has more of a darker tone, one yeah. has more of a lighter tone. Well, my computer's you know. about to die. Okay, we can um, ask each other questions then. Okay. We can do that, yeah. Um, but one question for you, how did you um, become, like how did you decide you wanted to be a paramedic, and like how was, sure. what was that process? Yeah, like? actually, I was in EMT first 10 years ago. I was in graduate school. <laughs> I was in grad school to be a filmmaker, actually, which is why it's always funny when there's like production people. I'm like, I went to school for that. <laughs> uh, I decided I all, both wanted to have a backup job in case I couldn't be a filmmaker, and also I have always been interested in the medical field and never, you know, I, I was never, like I didn't do that well academically in high school, so medical school was never like on the path. Mm -hmm. For me, even oh, wait, though I have my, I have my later on, maybe it could, you know, it was one of those things at the time didn't seem to be a thing. So I always wanted to help people. I was, I was always interested in blood and guts and thought that would be a good way to get interested in, in blood and guts. Yep. Yep. So I, I got my first EMT license uh, in 2007, so almost 10 years ago. Uh, and I sort of helped out here and there. I did, you know, sort of like I would be like the medical person at like sports games and stuff in grad school. And then I sadly let it drop. I decided to become an EMT again last year uh, when I was in San Francisco. I helped out with a couple of medical emergencies. As you know, San Francisco has shit happening all Lots the time. Of, wait, on what, the buses what, com and what like, company did you work for in San Francisco? I didn't. Oh, I just oh, sort of oh. decided I need to get back into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I moved to New York a year ago, decided like now's the time. And I went to class to be an EMT and now I'm in a oh, volunteer Was that for me? <gasps> I got a Lenten coffee came. Um, can, can we find a plug for my laptop? So uh, someone dumped coffee on it. Being an EMT is really fun. Untangled. It's really really fun, especially okay. if you're uh, a volunteer like I am, and you don't have to. Because EMTs, I don't know if you knew this, they're not paid well. You do know this. You used to I work know. at an yeah. ambulance. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Not paid well at all. I mean, and it's a pretty important job. It's like you. So. Ha it's you have to be passionate about it because you are not making a living yeah. doing it. Yeah. Um, you pretty much have to go for more training. Uh, the paramedic level, you can make a little bit more of a living. But uh, you know, I'm a basic EMT. I'm good. Thank you so much, though. Um, but yeah, it's you have to be passionate about it. The folks I work with, we're all volunteers, so we have to be passionate about it. Like, there's we're not getting paid at all to, you know, help bloody people. Uh, but it's really fun. And I'm in Brooklyn and in Queens, doing my, doing my right, EMTing. Awesome. Yeah. So a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it, it's great. It's great. And it's great that you do that. I love it. It's fun for me. We need it. Like, it's fun. People need, people need, when you're people bleeding, give a shit about their, their health. About their, their community yeah. and, and, and that sort of stuff. So yeah, volunteers are great. Volunteer if you can, if you have time. Whatever you do, you don't have to clean up bloody people. But volunteering is a good, that's always a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, all right, it's my move. Your move. Here's a good question. Favorite game that no one has talked about? Oh. Um, yeah. So I'll talk about one of my favorite games from the last like few years. Please. Um, well, two of them. Nino Kuni, did you play that? I did. That was in my PS3 when I yeah. bought it here. So yeah. I, I pre-ordered like the full, like the full like top, top end thing. And I took a week off work and I played it for like 60 hours. because. I'm a huge Ghibli fan, and I am absolutely like obsessed with JRPGs. So it was like that was like one of the best like games that for my well-being, I feel like it just like really made me happy. Um, another one of my favorites from the last few years was Dragon's Crown. I played that like oh. a lot. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I I just like really love like 
side scrolling. Vanillaware. Yeah. Well, I love Vanillaware. Yeah. yeah. Like gorgeous. But I just really love like side scrolling, like beat 'em up games, and that was that like did everything for me. So. Yeah. I okay. So you answer too. I yeah. famously wrote the review for that at Polygon and gave it a six point five. I think. I mean that's good. Compare like compared to what it could be. Compared I got to in what trouble. A lot of people. You got in trouble. I mean, like I got harassed. <laughs> For getting a six, why? Because people were like, "It's better than that." Well, they were they were mad because I I said a thing about I didn't care about the boob, boobs. About the were titties. Great. About the titties. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, honest. Let's be real here. Boobs are wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Boobs are great. Yeah. I love them. I have them. You know, they're a wonderful body part. It was the NPC stuff that actually bothered me. The fact that you could touch ladies in their special parts didn't and they like would just kind of be like, ah. I was like. Come on. It, it was, it was. I liked the Amazon. Like, I liked playing as her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me happy. I played a sorceress. I cosplayed she a sorceress. Cool. She was like, a cool she's lady. very cool. But there were a few parts where, like, the cutscenes with, like, the naked That's women. What I was like, and, like, Ugh. it was a little over sexualized. Like, it could have been, like, a naked, it could have been a naked mermaid. Yeah. Just chill. I'm cool with it. She didn't have to be, like, moving and, like, you it know. Was, it was the it fact was, that you could, like, harass her. Yeah. And it was, like, rewarded. That's what I was like. Come on, yeah. folks. Yeah. Sexy is great. Yeah. Like for, in my opinion, sexy is awesome. But like, you don't need to make them be like helpless. <laughs> That's my issue. Yeah. But the, I, I love that game. Yeah. Um, I can. All right. I can. I can give give us another. Understand. Oh wait, give give Danielle a question. I mean, we might as well both answer like those general yeah. questions. Yeah. It's totally cool. Question for Danielle. The whole chat is just saying, I agree. Boobs are great. Boobs are fantastic. Yeah. You know, um, they're great. They're a great thing. There are probably pictures of my sorceress cosplay like on my Instagram, which is just Danica Harrod, like somewhere way nice. back, way back, Very or good. on Twitter somewhere. Around 2013. Good luck getting through all those selfies. Yeah. <laughs> um, In summer of 2013, if I recall correctly, that's when that game came out. We need we need more questions. Let me scroll up before the boob talk. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and no boobs are great, too. Boobs are wonderful. Not having boobs is wonderful. Like, bodies are great. Bodies, are, bodies great. are awesome. Bodies are great. I'm just going to say that. As a blanket statement, body positive, let's, they're all good. Yes. They're all nice. Um, what game have you played through that was not worth it? Oh, God, so many games. Uh, I used to review games for a living. So let's say many of them. Uh, let me think of a particularly egregious one um, while I... Well, I make a dangerous move here. Sorry, sorry, camera folks. I'm just doing this so I don't ruin my life and yours. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game from about uh, two or three years ago. Um, so I, I gave my very first 10 at Polygon to Gone Home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I gave my very first one at Polygon like the next week. It was a, a terrible... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that I, I played through most of it. And it's not that it was like, clear, clearly just needed some QA mm -hmm, issues. Mm -hmm. Things would not load. You would load into a room and you couldn't kind of go. It was just broken. And it was just like, this ain't worth it, man. And I love me some Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. Like I used to dress up as a Ninja Turtle yeah. just for fun as a kid, not even at Halloween. Definitely at Halloween, also just for fun. So that was just kind of not much. worth it. It was a little broken, you know? So we'll go with that one. Um, one of the ones for me, I think, was, okay, I, I love side-scrolling beat-em-ups, like, Good. it's, yeah. like, one of my favorite genre of video game, but, uh, Code of Princess on the 3DS. Ooh, I've heard of that. Was, uh, it was that, and it yeah. was titty, but it, it was. Sure, sure. Um, it was something that I felt, I felt so dedicated to play because my sister had bought it for me for a birthday present <sighs> when it came out, and, um. I just didn't, I just had a horrible time playing it. Yeah. Like, the, the game mechanics were not the best, and um, I just had a hard time with, with the characters, and uh, that was one in recent memory. I, I think, see. I think another one, probably like a, a really, really long time ago, was one of the Spyro games that was bad and I don't remember which one that was. Yeah, they, they were good for a while and then they kind of took a bit of a dive. Yeah. yeah, I was like so dedicated to the franchise though that I had to play through all of it. You liked a good Spyro back in the yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. I see. All right, it's my move. All right. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna just 
go for a, a difficult one. You did it. That was nice. Because I want to make sure you made that. made that look easy. Whew, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm yeah, nervous. Nerves are starting up now. This is where Jenga gets a little tough. All right, I'm going to make a move as well. Ooh, we got a good question. Let's, yeah. I'm just going to toss the questions out. All right, please Most do. underrated game console? Nintendo 64. I agree. I, I think uh, people agree are hundred percent. Like, you know, it didn't use the SNES. And I'm like, honey, it had those amazing rare games. Yeah. It had Goldeneye. It had Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, God. Had, oh, God. Don't, don't stand on the table when oh we're boy. right here. Oh, boy. We're making this work. It had the Banjo-Kazooie games. Yeah, it had... So just like, such, like, no, it did not have the number of games of the SNES, but it had some high quality games. And yes, it was primarily first party games that were really good and rare games that were really good, but that's all I needed. Cruising USA, baby. Cruising USA. Also, and I really love Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64. I love it fantastic so much. Fantastic game. Truly fantastic game. I feel like that game, game is so underrated. It's, it's, Maybe one of the best Whoa, games of the that era. That just came right you out. You did it. That just came right That's out. Beautiful. Also, can we just talk about Diddy Kong Racing for a minute? So good. Which I forgot. So good. We should play that. Do we have that? We might. We should. I mean, we should make sure. We're very close to our goal with games. Yeah, we're, we are. We're about to hit it. We might as well go over. We might as might well. well. We might as well go over. Maybe we'll be doing 76 games in 72 hours. All we know is that 72 hours are happening. Um, what is the most overrated console? I feel like we can't say that. PlayStation 2. Controversial. <laughs> well, I, a little bit controversial. I love the PS2 just because I feel like that's where I played the most of my games Maybe when PS1. I was a teenager. I think PS1. Maybe PS1, because people really do talk that up quite a bit. And it's like, there were some great games. Don't get me wrong, but people talk about it like it was the second coming. It's kind of like, well, no, the Dreamcast was the second coming. Dreamcast was the I second I mean, let's coming. be real. Yeah. You know? yeah. But we all acknowledge that one, so, yeah. I think I just annoyed a lot of people, probably. No, you're fine. Oh, boy. Is it my move or your move? My move. Also, Xbox 360 is probably overrated. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Which is not to say that they are not good. Just, just maybe they get a little too much hype is all we're saying here. All right. Go, yeah. All right, guys, more questions. Give us, give us some more. I feel like there's kind of only one piece I can take out at this point. <laughs> this Jenga tower might be going down. What's your favorite multiplayer game? Oh, boy, it might be Diddy Kong Racing. No, it's not. Diddy Kong Racing had good racing, yeah. but it wasn't the best battle mode. I know I touched it. But it's not coming easy, so. Um, this might be the one that brings down the tower. Uh, you know what? I've probably played the most of. Uh, I played a lot of Choo Choo Rocket back in the day. Uh, and I played a lot of Mario Kart 64. It's probably what I've played the most of. Yep. Or GoldenEye 64. Uh, those are all some hot faves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, I, I think Mario Kart 64 is, is one of mine. And also... Uh, so precarious. Also, Dream Phone, that's a favorite multiplayer game. Dream Phone, right? Um, also, I, I really loved, and I went through a big phase on this too, Little Big Planet um, for like a really long time because I'm just like a nerd that wants to play like a nice game and jump around. You did it. Can't believe that worked out. <laughs> and I think Little Big Planet has to be one of mine. Oh, I love Little Big Planet. I taught a college class on Little Big Planet. Did you? Using it as like a design tool, yeah. We are getting really high. We're getting to the, that point, kids. We're doing it, though. Uh, Coolest part of the Vice office. Let's talk, about, let's talk about work. Oh, my god. I love this office. I love that we have showers, and I could take a shower here yesterday. No, but it has to be the skyline. It has to be the deck overlooking. You can see the Manhattan skyline. It's beautiful. Yeah. You're probably seeing them in the interstitials a little bit. Uh, really, it's really pretty. When I came here for my first interview, which was not that long ago, um, I was awed. I sat out on that deck with Joel and Austin, and I was like, is this real? I think I cried the first time I, like, we used to do these things for Thump where 
we had like in the sun, like sunsets parties where oh. we would have someone DJ into the sunset oh during the summer. God. And it was like, I think I cried at the first one. Yeah. I, it, it's so beautiful out there. It's, it's cool. just so We're very beautiful. lucky to be in this really gorgeous space. It's, it's awesome. Um, most shameful trollish thing you've ever done on the internet under any alias? I feel like this is a good question. It's a really good question. I'm such a, a nice dad. We are getting, oh. Oh God, what is the most shameful trollish thing? I'm so nice though. I don't know if I've done I that mean, any if you, shameful thing. Yeah, well that, that's good. Are you going for that? Oh, baby. I feel like you gotta do push it fast, like, oh my God. Does it wanna move? That's so All right, well, for me, I um, I was a little bit of a, not a bully, but I was like a popular kid in junior high and high school. Like, I was like the tallest kid in school. Like, I hung out with the older kids. Um, and what I used to do on AIM, you did it. What I used to do on AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, is I made a fake, um, a fake AIM account called I'm a Squish You. <laughs> and I went around and just IM'd like so many people from school and pretended that I was some classmate. And yeah, it was bad. I've also been in chat rooms since I was like 11 or 12. Okay. So I've just like been on the internet You've been doing forever. That. I never touched 4chan. I never like, I spend time on Reddit, but I've never like really commented on anything. Sure, so sure. I'm not super familiar with like the trolling side of the internet as much as just like talking to people on it. Well, this one was easy. That one right there was easy. Yeah, it was I'm a squish you, the letter U. That was I'm it. I'm a squish you. Can you say that like Marcella Shell? Um, I used to have an AIM screen no. name that was I'm a squish you and <laughs> I would sometimes just play a trick for my class. <laughs> I like that a lot. We're doing amazing. This is the longest Jenga I've ever played, I think. I just feel like we don't have many options anymore. You gotta pull like, a Jeng. I'm just gonna go for this, even though it's like completely- I know the trolliest thing I've ever done. My friggin' terrible jokes. My terrible, terrible dad jokes that I- I'm cheating. I terrify my girlfriend. Terrify, terrorize my girlfriend with bad dad jokes, like when we stream games, and she's always just like, oh God, just stop. Why am I here? That's, that's the worst thing I've done, I think. And it's pretty bad. I made a dad jokes game once. Like I feel a like game that's about, on brand for you. It was an adventure game about dad jokes. And it was all dads telling terrible jokes. Um, what's your favorite anime? Well, Amanda, your friend and mine, mm -hmm. Our, my, our good friend Amanda is my actual. Um, she works at language. Dots. The she works at Dots. Like so cool. She's such a cool girl. She's so cool. She's showing me the animes. I liked Cowboy Bebop before. I feel like that's the entry yeah, level. Yeah. I am watching Yawamushi Pedal. With yeah, her. very good. Uh, Yawapeta. 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 Yeah. Uh, and Yuri on Ice yeah. with her, and I'm really loving those. So like, I feel like I only have like the easy answers, like the mm -hmm. you know entry level stuff. I was also introduced to Thunderbolt Fantasy. And that so good, the puppet show. Amazing. Yeah, it's directed by Gen Urobochi, who like has done some of the best shows, like the Fate series uh, and I am just other so stuff. into it. Yeah. It is just like extreme like I know it comes from the sort of like tradition of like the puppet storytelling mm -hmm. stuff. Um, which is like very dramatic. And those close up shots on like the puppets' faces when they when they have like a, a move, it's the best thing. Um, for me, it's really hard for me to answer. I have like a top, I've seen so many shows, like uh, for those of you who don't know, I come from an anime background. I've been at Crunchyroll for four years prior to this. Nice. Um, my, my staple favorites are like Naruto, um, Inuyasha, Utena, um, Shinsuke Yori from the New World, which is based on a visual novel, and uh, Cowboy Bebop. Um, Every Ghibli movie, not every Ghibli movie. Um, Satoshi Kon works, Perfect Blue. Um, oh, Perfect Blue. Yeah. I have that on a DVD. It's very good. So, um, someone asked uh, the most, what game did we put the most amount of hours into? Mine was Final Fantasy X. Mm. Good God. 
GoldenEye 64 might have a place in there for me because I played so much of that with my friends, but I also played like the single player just over and over again. I didn't even go for all the like secret missions. I would just play, like there were times I would play that game and I would play missions and see if I could like shoot out every single light in a window. Yeah, like, those ridiculous are the best. Stuff those like are the that. best. That's like yeah. when you know you love a game. Yeah, when it's just like, I just want to spend time here. You know, like it's an old friend almost. I'm just going to hang out in this world. Um, that's one of them for sure. And also the Donkey Kong Country games, because I also did that with those games, where I would just play over and over again. I would just be hanging out with friends, talking, pre-stream, you know, this is way before streaming. I had a whole thing with my friend Allie, my best friend Allie growing up, uh, where we would eat tortilla chips and salsa, play Donkey Kong Country, and we might like move on to jelly beans after that. And we would just like spend the night playing those games over and over. Yeah. Just being in that world. You know, even if we weren't doing super well or like trying to beat the game, it was just all about being in that world, having fun in that world, and just enjoying ourselves. And it was just the best thing. Yeah. Best thing. Um, okay, so we have about 15 more minutes. Okay. I wonder if we can make this last. Oh, God. Uh, that's a tall order, a literal tall order here, because this is a precarious tower. I'm like just so. Yeah, sick. if we knock it down, we should do a speed round, I think. Uh, that would be a really good idea uh, of like just like moving, moving, moving fast. Um, yeah, okay. okay. I'm just gonna tidy this portion a little bit. Just tidying, that was just a tidy. That wasn't a... Oh, I also have OCD. <laughs> Everyone talking about OCD in the chat. If you've seen me like rolling my eyes, which I do like when my eyes get strained, it's because of my OCD. Okay, okay. Um, I've been doing it, you know, because we've been looking at games and shit all weekend. Oh my god. Um, oh holy god. Holy shit, we're, we're, we're wavering. We are, oh. this is so scary. Um, oh my god, we're at that point. Let's see. Holy Any questions, Jesus. what questions we got? We got, you guys gotta keep asking us questions. We gotta keep, yeah, we gotta keep that going. Favorite portable game on portable consoles or phones? Uh not going anywhere. Probably Medios. Also in terms of like what I've spent the most time playing. So I talked about this a little bit uh, during the early morning segment yesterday when Mike was asking like, you know, if you had gaps in gaming time. And I haven't had any real gaps, but there were times where like I was only playing like mm -hmm. a couple of smaller games. Mm -hmm. Medios for me, I think I 100%ed Medios, which was an amazing little puzzle game that had some drop mechanics and also some sort of like uh, fusion mechanics for making new planets and yeah, different, yeah. like planets had different gravity and all sorts of stuff. This is probably going to knock over the tower. Just so you know, we're, I think we're maybe at well, that Well, let, let me rush answer. Um, mine are actually kind of recent. Time Hollow is one of them. Um, that is like a, a visual novel type game. And then the other one is Kirby, uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe. Um, oh, I loved that game. Yeah. That was a good one. I, well, I've played it twice because it's kind of a fast playthrough if you just like sit for a yeah. day. Um, yeah. And I just love Kirby games, they make me very happy, so. Kirby's great. You know, Kirby 64, Kirby and the Crystal Shards might be a favorite. I played that for, for the first time recently. Um, my friend Maxo, shit, this is so scary. <laughs> my friend Maxo like emulated it on his Wii U and it was so fun. It was oh, so man. fun. Oh man, it is a really good game. I love the music in that game too. I haven't played it since it came out on the N64. I played that um, and Mischief Makers around the same time, and those are two like just wonderful, wonderful platformers that I truly love on the N64. Another reason why that was an underrated system. People are, do you, are, do you listen to podcasts? I do. Okay, people sure. are asking about your favorite podcast or like favorite gaming podcast. Yeah, I, well I am on a podcast. Idle Weekend, you should listen to it. Um, and Idle Thumbs was always actually my favorite even before I was on Idle Thumbs. I, I feel this like, might be the end. I feel like we're... This is the end. <laughs> Yay! Jenga! Shit! <laughs> Sorry, we can do a speed round. I got a screenshot it falling over. Oh, yes. That was really good. Oh, boy. This is what happened. I'm so happy. You, we did good, though. You know what? That was a high tower. I'm making it. I'm making it a little bit again. We can do quick speed round because we only have about 10 minutes left of this. Um, I really like uh, 
Can we get help picking up the? the I, I'm, I like I like a lot of nerd podcasts. Like I love Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. I feel like I actually learn quite a bit listening to that. It's like an, a history podcast, and they go long. Like like yeah, some yeah, of those yeah, episodes yeah. are three hours, but you learn wow. about an era or a time and place. I, there's also a podcast called the Myths and Legends podcast that I love. It's you're, a, just, you're just into like lore and stuff. I'm into kind of? yeah history and lore history and stuff, stuff yeah. like that. So that's all real life myths uh, from different cultures, myths, yeah, legends, and fables from, from sort of different uh, yeah. cultures. Made interesting, made fun, told with like a really good light tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that one as well. Uh, so those are the non-gaming ones. And then of course, I love the Beast Cast. The Giant Bomb guys are of amazing. Course. Beast Cast was like my, you know, that's what There's I actually like right to work out too. I've been out there on that deck working out to the Giant Beast Cast. Uh, this whole kind of working week. out to podcasts is kind of the best. I really do enjoy it. I really do like. That, I have so. to say, our podcast is really good. Too. Our both podcast them, is amazing. So we have yeah. we have a podcast that Mike in the UK runs, and uh, that's our Vice Gaming podcast. And then we have the one that Austin and, and Patrick run, and that's our new Vice Gaming podcast by Waypoint. Yeah. So pretty awesome. So you should you should go to iTunes and rate them highly. My. I'm sorry, uh, I'm taking the first thing here. Oh. Why don't you take the first thing? Yeah. Uh, Look how little this tower is. It was like up Beast, here. Beastcast is also probably my favorite gaming podcast yeah. besides ours. And then um, I listen to a lot of NPR stuff. Oh, uh, sure. Serial, yeah. I was obsessed with when that was, when that was out. That was a thing. Um, I don't listen to as many as I should, uh, but yeah. I really do. Uh, I really do like podcasts for just having stuff going on. You know, like like it's just nice to kind of. I, I like gaming podcasts for both the sort of check in and hear about maybe elements of gaming that I don't, that I'm not up on for whatever reason, and also the sort of friendliness aspect. Because a lot of gaming podcasts have a very nice sort of affable quality to them. You know, friends chatting about something. I'm just gonna do a tidy. Um, and then I, I like hearing about history and, and hearing about, uh, you know, cultural history and stuff like that. I'm a, I'm a big dork. Okay, someone asks, what's your favorite type of music and who's a newish artist that you're into? Oh, Lord. I like wispy electronic stuff. <laughs> like, Same. I like FKA Twigs and I like, um, like maybe I'd probably put Little Dragon in this category a little bit. Like, wispy, fun. Oh, my God. Kind Twice of by Little Dragon is like one of my favorite songs See, of all time. I love it so, so yeah. much. Like, I. I can't think of a bad album by them. Probably my favorite artist of all time, and here's where you're gonna be like, Danielle's a 90s girl, garbage. Seeing them live at the Warfield in San Francisco was the greatest concert. I've seen them live three times in my life, and like, live at the Warfield, like, four or five years the ago. The best. It's the actual best concert I've ever been to. I just love their sound. It's like, rock and alternative in 90s, but like, they still sound rock and alternative in 90s, even here in 2016. Uh, so. Yeah, wispy electronic stuff and uh, garbage. That's what I like. <laughs> I like a lot of garbage, kids. I moved right after you, so you're up. Oh, okay. Um, um, for me, I my favorite genre of all time is R&B. I oh I'm my a, god, I'm yes. an R&B singer, so you are. I am. Yeah. How did I not know I that have, about you. I have a SoundCloud here. Let me self promote SoundCloud.com/slash Danica Music. Like you're all about it. I have a lot of stuff coming up, um, but yeah, that, that's like what I do in my spare time. Is like I sing. Yeah. Um, I'm really into like, I grew up on like 90s R&B and hip hop, so I've, I've always been like really into rap and really into hip hop and like, I'm from the Bay Area, so I always followed like hyphy, the hyphy movement and like have been going to shows since I was a kid and. Oh my God. So that's my favorite genre of music. I think one of my favorite new-ish artists, um, Dram, D-R-A-M, um, he, is most well known, I think, right now for his song with Lil Yachty Broccoli, but he is like super, super awesome. Noisy actually recently did um, a special on him, so you can find that over at noisy.vice.com. Um, and then I'm also really into like electronic music. A lot of the music I make, I sing R&B, but like a lot of my friends make electronic music. That, that was like one of the driving factors yes. of me moving out here. Um, a lot of my friends make electronic music and some of my favorite artists, in that in that world are probably like, geez, like Machine Drum and Sam Jellytree. I don't know how to say his last name. Um, Tennyson, uh, Drain Puppet, Maxo. Like my friends. It's weird yeah. because like yeah. these people are my friends now. Yeah. But yeah. 
Oh shit. That's all right. Yeah, Drom is like, tidy. if you haven't listened to Drom's new album, he just dropped a new album. I haven't listened to all of it, but um, it's really fucking good. Nice. I, I need more of that in my life, because I also grew up in 90s R&B and rap, and like, it was like the girl groups though, like TLC, Salt and Peppa, my <laughs> so good. my thing. So like, good. Like that that was definitely what I grew up on and what I have always yeah. loved. And yeah. like whenever a place plays that, that's what I want. And yeah. I want stuff that sounds like that. Can you please clue me into the world of that? Oh, I like, can. Like, I would love for yeah. you to do that. Yeah, I can totally help you. You help it. me with working out. I'll help you with, yeah. with the R and B. Look at this. This is teamwork. Yeah. That's how teamwork works. Um, someone is saying please be into Chance the Rapper and I just want to say I just went to Toronto to see him live on his coloring book tour and it was like the best show I've seen in so long it was so good oh, it's awesome. awesome TLC is good yeah. shit um God. oh TLC I do like Danny Brown he's he's awesome he's like um is he touring right now he's doing something there are posters up all over Brooklyn no joke um no good choices. Let's here. see um, if we have. We only have a few minutes to go. Favorite dessert. I love carrot cake and I love cheesecake and I love chocolate cake and I love. You cookies. love cake. I love ice cream though more than like life. I have a sweet tooth. That's the thing. I, I have a healthy lifestyle. No. <laughs> That's part of my healthy lifestyle. That's Jenga. it. Jenga. Let's put it away. We'll Jenga. put it away while we finish up. Yeah, we'll um, finish talking. Um, yeah, but you're super healthy, though. I'm super healthy, but I do, my sweet tooth is my, like, I need to be careful with sugar. Because I will not stop. Same. I will not, I'm a child on a birthday. People had to, like, keep sweets away from me when I was at Crunchyroll, because it was, like, just... I feel like my mom, and I think my mom actually told me this, like, she, she drank a lot of milk and ate a lot of chocolate when she was pregnant with me. Sure. And so I... Gave you a good start. Yeah, like I just, like, yeah. love chocolate, but I also... I love cake, like, cake is like, if there's a cake, cake. we got a cake delivered one day uh, with Steve Aoki's, Aoki, yeah, Steve Aoki's face on it, and um, good. that cake tasted, tasted pretty good, despite, despite the face, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I love cake. Sweet tooth, man, that's my, I will eat quinoa for days, I will, you know, very, very healthy until we get to the sugar, and then I'm like, oh, there's M&Ms here. The fact that there are M&Ms in this office, I have to actually be careful. I get a handful every day at like four, because I need like a sugar boost. Need a little bit. Yeah. You know, a little bit of sugar. Um, so, le one more question for, for each of us. So, someone asked me about voice acting, and I'm just gonna answer that, because a lot of people were asking about it in the chat. I've never done voice acting, because um, there's no money in it. Um, I've done like voiceover yeah. stuff for TV um, and like Pandora ads and shit when I was at Crunchyroll. Nice. But there's no money in it. It's just kind of like I've always like liked doing impressions. So, um, so that's that's how that came to be. And then that's pretty cool. Let's take one more. One more question. One more question chat. for Danielle from the chat. Yeah. I'm ready. Good game, you would sacrifice to get a new game in a different series. Good game, I would sacrifice for a new game in a series. Whew. I would sacrifice a Smash Brothers game, even the last one, for a new Mario Galaxy. I feel like that would oh be a my fair God. trade. Mario Galaxy games were amazing, and I feel like that would be a fair trade. We've got a lot of Smash. We've got a lot of Smash. I know I it's feel a good like game. It's a popular game. It's excellent. We need a new Galaxy. I fucked up somewhere, and this isn't. This is off center. It's, it's okay. We're off kilter, but this is about as good as we're gonna get. So yeah. I think. Well, so I think it's about time for us to to transition into another break. But just again, thank you, Danica. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much to the production team. They are amazing. They are making this happen. They are making us look good or at least like we're still running on, on yeah. something. So yeah. that makes me happy. Yeah. So this is 72 games in 72 hours. Waypoint.vice.com for all your gaming needs. Thank you so much for taking a break and we're moving into something new. Yes, we'll be back. Stay tuned. <laughs> 